What is going on everybody? Welcome to part two of the artificial intelligences in StarCraft 2 with Python tutorial series. In this video, what we're going to be doing is building on the last video, um, continuing to build up our starting game methodology. So the things here are pretty, pretty simple and pretty rule based. You have to, you know, create workers, distribute workers, collect your resources, and then basically kind of from that point, you can start to strategize how you want to do things but first we have to get through quite a few just kind of basic things now um, I forgot to mention in the previous video most of the time people ask hey what are the prerequisites to this series my answer is honestly always the same but I should have given it anyways um, and that like none there are never prerequisites to really anything like you just follow along and then anytime you hit something that you don't understand research it go to Google look for a tutorial on it um, whatever. So for example, you know, you, you might not understand inheritance. Well, you can go to pythonprogram.net, type in inherit, search, boom, inheritance, easy. Uh, maybe you don't understand async, uh, what, what's that? Async. Oh, async IO basics. Okay. And then you can learn about async IO, right? So if, if you're having trouble with anything, um, research it or ask in the comments for someone to help you. Because if if you try to learn everything before you're going to learn like new topics, a lot of times you're just going to find yourself always learning the basics and that's really boring. So anyways, there you go. Those are the prerequisites slash a life lesson. So, so let's get started. Um, what we've got here is we've distributed the workers. Uh, the next thing is we want to produce more workers. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, in order to produce workers, um, I did link to this in the... Um, in the text-based version of the tutorial, but this is like a good, a good little resource <laughs> for someone like me who has no idea what they're doing. So at least this is for the Protoss units, and you can kind of see um, what it takes. It's like the tree for building things. So you start off with a nexus. A nexus, well, with a nexus, you produce uh, or you can produce pylons and assimilators. Like but you basically start with the ability to do all of these things. Like so, with a worker. Now, the Nexus itself produces the little probes, the workers. Then, you from there, once you have a Nexus, you can build a gateway or a forge. And then from here, you can build, um, like if you have a gateway, you can build a cybernetics core. If you have, And then clearly, it looks like if you have a cybernetics core, wow, look at all the things it opens up for you. So there's like this path that you can take to various things. We're going to revisit this um, soon. But um, you have workers here. Now, in order to produce workers, you just need a Nexus. So that's relatively simple. So what we need to do is, the, since the Nexus produces it, we need to be able to reference a Nexus. So from sc2.constants, we're going to import Nexus and also probe because we want to produce a probe. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and like in this case, this on step, it runs every step. I don't really know what a step is. It's like not, I think it's not like a second. I don't think it's a fixed time even. I'm not really sure. Um, it might be like a game tick, which might actually be a fixed time. I don't think it's tied necessarily to frames. That would be kind of weird. Um, but it's some sort of iteration. Uh, I just don't know exactly what it is. If you happen to know what each step in the game is, let me know. Um, anyways, so in here, this, this little on step is going to, contain all of the methods that you want to run it just it's going to call all the methods you want to run per step <laughs> but then you might not get so lucky that distribute workers was already written for us awesome but that's not going to happen like so for now like to build workers our function for that is not going to it doesn't exist yet or our method rather so what we're going to do though is we're just going to say let's say await self dot build underscore workers so we still call it the same as this, but it just doesn't exist yet. So we have to define it. So we're going to come down here, async def build workers. Again, you're going to need to pass self here. Um, otherwise, we're ready to actually uh, build this, this function. So what we're going to do to build, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep calling it a function. It's a method. Anyways, we're going to build this method. What we need to do is for next nexus in um, self.units that are of nexus. So for every nexus um, that we have that is re ready and also um, has no QUE UE. I always have a hard time with Q. So what's this mean? 
So the Nexus itself has to be ready, i.e. it's built, it's not pending. And then no queue means it's not producing something else right now. So for humans who are slow um, and, and can only focus on so many things at any given time, there are key build queues. So you could say, okay, I want this building to produce five workers. And then you go do other things. So like when one worker is done, the next one starts up. Okay, that's what the queue is for. But when we're writing programs, the program can manage all of your buildings and all of your units simultaneously. Um, so there's really no reason to, to add to a queue. You're just kind of um, allocating resources for no good reason. Like the, it's, it's slightly disadvantageous to, to, to have a queue. So no reason to do it. So now what we're gonna do is, so for each Nexus um, that is ready, what do we want to do? Well, we definitely, we'd like to build um, a probe, but we need to make sure we can actually afford one. So if self.can underscore afford. So if we can afford a probe, now can afford is a method uh, that's tied to self. You don't see it defined here. So huh, it must be inherited. And it is. It's one of the methods in there. So if we can afford a probe, then what do we want to do? Well, we want a probe. So all we need to do is we can just say um, await oops, not all caps, await self.do. So what do we want to do? Well, we're going to do a nexus. So it's just this nexus object that we found that was ready with no queue. We want a nexus.train, and we want to train this probe. Okay, and that's it. Now we're, now we're building workers. Let's go ahead and run this and make sure it actually, it actually works. Should pop up, there it is. So fairly immediately, once we have resources at least, um, we should see that we start to produce um, a worker. Uh, and there it is. So it's already warping in a probe right now, which is just the, um, the word we use to describe bringing in units uh, for this class. So it warps it in, and immediately you can see it actually produces another one um, instantly. It almost looks like we did call it despite being weighted in queue. I guess that's how quick it went. Interesting. Um, anyways, that wasn't really supposed to happen. I just, that's the first time I've noticed that it does that. But you've already allocated the resource when you do that. That's the downside. Let's see what happens when we produce this one. Yeah, immediately two are made. Interesting. So what you can see now is we need more of these quote unquote pylons because if you look up here, this is how many, this is your supply. Um, we have 15 out of 15, so we've got 15 units. Uh, we, we can't create any more. Now, with the Protoss class, the way that we create units or increase our supply is with um, pylons. Now, pylons do two things. One, they increase your supply, but they also have this, uh, what's the name of the thing? I can't think of what it's called. It's like a psionic, I think, a psionic something. <laughs> uh, let me pull up the, the tree here. Uh, so I linked to this in the text-based version, but yeah, it's like, this is like the tree that, you know, what you need to build certain things. So, uh, you start off, eh, let me do this, man. Uh, do this. Okay. So you'll start off with the Nexus and you can build pylons and assimilators and assimilators are what we're going to build pretty soon. Uh, but then let's say you want to build like an army. Well, you're going to need to build a gateway. And with that, you get the Z a lot. But then if you build the cybernetics core, you get access to all these other things. And then from there, you get access to all of these things that you can build and so on. But anyways, what I'm interested in here is the pylon. What do they call that? A psionic matrix. So you can only bring it, you can only build buildings and warp in things as long as it's within the psionic matrix. And each pylon um, adds to that psionic matrix. So one thing we could do, I think it will be, the shortcut would be BP probably. Nope. I thought it would be P. No, it's going to be an E. So one thing you can do is when when the program is running, if you're curious about something um, and you want to learn more about the game, you can like click on one of your workers. Now, eventually it's going to get a new task. So you got to be kind of quick, but there's always shortcuts. So B is build. And then you find like, I want a pylon. So E. So you could hit B E pretty quick. And then so let's say, okay, I want a pylon right here. So if we build this pylon, it's going to take a second to build. 
Um, but once it's done building, it's going to add to our uh, count here for how many units we can have. So immediately you'll see these guys will start warping in actually. Um, and then you can see this little circle around here. And basically that's your psionic matrix. And so you can build more buildings inside that matrix. So as you can see, now our max units is up to 23. Click over here. Sure enough, it's creating more workers for us. So what we need to do now is build these probes. So I'm just going to exit. And so we want to build, um, I'm sorry, not probe, pylon. Everything's a P. <laughs> so, so the next thing we're going to do is await self.build underscore pylons. So then we're going to come down here. I'm going to clear this out just so I have space. Async def build pylons. And in order to build the pylons, we're going to probably need to access their type. So pylon. And um, now what we want to do is, is create some logic. So we don't want to just like constantly build pylons. It's a waste of resources and it gets in the way and all that. So, so we need to have some sort of logic. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to say if self dot supply left. And again, supply is kind of an unfortunate naming convention if you ask me because supply references and so is units by the way it's like I, i'm pretty sure units corresponds to both buildings and your actual like combat units and your workers um anyway that's beside the point supply left is how many it's like supply is interchangeable really with population so supply left so if your supply left is let's say less than five um what do we want to do well we want to build a pylon but what if we're already building a pylon? So if the supply left is less than five and self dot already underscore pending, um, I'm sorry, if and not self already pending pylon. So if we're not already building a pylon, what do we want to do? Well, we want to grab um, the nexuses. So we're just going to say nexuses equals self dot units nexus dot ready. So it's a nexus that already exists. Um, so if nexuses dot exists, if self dot can afford, so if we can afford that Python, Python, <laughs> Pylon, I think it's about breakfast time for me, man. I can't think. Await. Um, and in this, in this case, we want to await self dot build a pylon, but when we build things, we also have to specify where. <laughs> so again, this is a very complicated thing. Um, and we're, we're, at least for now, we're gonna use near equals nexuses dot first. So we're just gonna build it close to our very, our initial nexus. So, which is also a funny sounding word for a command center that you can have multiple nexuses. Anyways, um, <laughs> we're gonna build it near the first one. So already though i so like right now everything is rule based um and but but where you could begin to start using things like reinforcement learning or just deep learning in general is even this where do you want to place that nexus and like how do you want to distribute your workers how many should go in different places these things are extremely complicated so even just that little tiny thing like where exactly should we place this pylon that's a very complicated thing. <laughs> and so to, to be best, because because of that psionic um, matrix, um, that's actually a, a very complex question. So anyways, this one's going to be super simple. We're just going to build a eh, like close to a nexus. <laughs> but but uh, if you wanted to be very efficient about it, um, you would need to be smart, have a much better reasoning for it. We probably should have... Um, Uh-oh, we crashed. What did we do? Do we not pat? Okay. <laughs> Seen this one before. So in case you run into this one, it's okay, I guess, that we run into errors because we're probably going to hit it at some point. Type error. Build pylons. Takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. What? So what's happening is we forgot to pass self. So because this is a method, self, the object, is going to get passed into here. We need to make sure when we define this method that we include self here. And because that's what's happening, right? We're, we're actually run self is running this method so self is passing um, later on we might build functions that don't need self to be passed but in this case you, you need to pass self anyway we'll try again we probably could 
turn off real time now, but we'll, we'll see the result of this pretty quickly. Um, and then um, probably probably after we, we see this, oh my gosh, did we hit another? No, no, it's running. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't see the game. The game was supposed to pop up and it didn't because I was clicking around. Okay, hopefully um, we're already building workers. So any, any moment now, as long as once we get the required resources, we should find that we build a pylon. There goes a pylon right now uh, over here. So yeah, just somewhere, it, it's just built kind of anywhere within range of the Nexus, which ideally like our next pylon and something that we're gonna see, like if I was to speed this up, we would find that it's gonna probably build the, well, it doesn't necessarily have to, but ideally you'd probably build the next pylon like, he I'm pointing to the, <laughs> to the screen. <laughs> you know, maybe the next pylon here or here, probably here because it's more defensive back here and no one can come from, from back here. They're all gonna come from up here. Anyway, you build maybe your next pylon here, but we might find that instead it builds the next pylon just right next to this one, which is pointless. Um, so yeah, you'd probably eventually want to optimize that one quite a bit, uh, but for now that's good enough. So already, let's see, it should be less than five. So once uh, one more is warped in, we should see that another pylon is built. Uh, did he come in? For some reason, I guess we're still, why are we still five down? I swear we were, okay. Anyway, so in, immediately when that other one was built, boom, there goes the next pylon. Um, anyway, um, and then why are we, that's kind of interesting that there's two at the same time. I'll have to check the logic on that one. Um, like no queue. It must just be happening so quickly. Anyway. Okay, so we're building pylons. We're creating more workers. We're expanding everything. But like I said, it's, basically pointless for each each patch of minerals to have any more than three workers on it at any given time. So we're going to exhaust our area here quite quickly. Um, so what we need to do next is actually expand to other areas. So um, we're gonna do that and then probably work on building. So like right now we've got workers, but we don't have anything to actually, you know, build an army. So I think in the next tutorial, what we'll do is both expand to new sites. You can see them on the map, like this is a new site, this is a site, this is a site. And basically all of these little sites will have these little Vespine geysers. And this is where you're gonna collect this element here, this Vespine gas. Um, Anyway, so in the next one, what we'll do is we'll start collecting the gas, building what we need on here to collect the gas, building the buildings that we need to create our army, and then probably maybe after that start building our army, because at that point, the strategy already forces its way in with things like, you know, we only have so much supply, so how much of that should be our army versus our workers and all that stuff. So anyways, that's all for now. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. As always, thank you for all your support and your sponsorships and all that cool stuff. And I will see you in the next tutorial.